Imagine strolling through airport security with a small silvery block of metal in your pocket. It's not explosive, nor is it radioactive. It even melts at the palm of your hand. In fact, gallium is a metal with a melting point of about 29.7 degrees Celsius or 85.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So it turns the liquid from just your body heat. Sounds harmless, right? Well, you're wrong. That melting metal can really destroy aluminum, turning the solid metal into a fragile flaky mush. And guess what most airplanes are made of? Yep, that's right, aluminum. Bringing gallium onto a plane is basically bringing aluminum's worst nightmare on board. Today we will show you why gallium and airplanes do not really mix well together. By doing two crazy and messy experiments. Buckle up, this is going to be a fun, educational and slightly evil ride through science. So welcome to Cube Chemistry, where we will discuss all the elements of the periodic system and also do experiments. And if you like this video and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe. Also make sure to fill in the poll so you can influence which element we will be discussing next week. Now before we start, a quick disclaimer. Gallium is safe to handle, non-toxic, but it makes a mess and it stains skin and surfaces. So handle it with care and don't even think about trying this on an actual airplane. So time to put on our safety goggles and see gallium's power in action. In the first experiment we will be using gallium to destroy parts of a soda can. Yes, I am again destroying a soda can. And I honestly don't think it will be the last time either. If you want to see the video where I destroyed one the last time, make sure to watch the hydrogen peroxide video. So for this experiment you would need a regular soda can, empty and cleaned, a small amount of gallium metal, a few grams is more than enough, hot water to melt the gallium, sandpaper or steel wool to scratch the aluminum, and gloves to keep your hands clean. And about an hour of patience. So the first step is to place the gallium in a dish or a zip seal bag and put it into hot water. In about a minute or two it will melt into a shiny liquid. Its melting point is low so hot tap water will do the trick. It's like watching the T-1000 from Terminator 2 melt. It is very cool. Now pro tip, wear gloves now. Not because gallium is toxic, but because this sticks to your fingers and makes you look like the Tin Man. Now the next step that we have to take is that we have to score the can. Now while the gallium is melting, lightly sand a patch on the aluminum can's surface about the size of a coin. Remove any paint or coating until you see shiny metal. Aluminum cans have a thin protective oxide and paint layer. We need to expose bare aluminum so gallium can do its magic. Now the next step is to carefully pour or rub the liquid gallium onto the scratch pads of aluminum. You don't need a lot, just enough to coat the area. You will notice it looks like you're painting the can with silvery melt water. Make sure it stays on the spot. You can even smear it around the area with a q-tip or a gloved finger. Warning, it's already getting messy. Gallium loves to stick on everything. Now this is where the patience comes in. Leave the gallium coated can for about 30 minutes to an hour. In reality the gallium is busy seeping into the aluminum. It's literally infiltrating the metal on a microscopic level, weakening its structure. Now this is the moment I've been waiting for. I put back on my gloves and I pick up the gallium treated can. Now for the fun part I try to bend it a little bit and twist it and as you can see on the treated sport it doesn't need much force at all. It will just crack open. Now the can rips apart like it's wet cardboard. We just broke an aluminum can using just gallium and that is what we tried to demonstrate. So what happened? Well upon bending the treated part of the can crumbled to pieces. It might feel brittle like a cracker instead of the usual tough flexible aluminum. Now the rest of the can where the gallium didn't touch stays strong. But that gallium coated patch is now the Achilles heel. Gallium weakened the metal so much that the can tears with a light touch. It's almost spooky. One moment it's a solid can, the next moment it's a metallic mush. So what I have here is a thicker piece of aluminum. In our second experiment we will be using gallium to punch a clean hole through an aluminum object. This shows how gallium can eat away at aluminum in one spot. Almost like it's drilling a hole without a drill. We're just using chemistry. 
So what you need for this is a piece of aluminum metal that is thicker than a can. For example, you could use an aluminum bar, a thick aluminum foil that you fold several times, or a chunk of an aluminum gadget. I know uh, that uh, Nile Red, for instance, used an aluminum baseball bat, which also worked perfectly. Again, you will need gallium, uh, hot water, a tool to scratch the aluminum, uh, a nail or a knife would do, and gloves. Now, just like before, melt a bit of gallium in hot water until it's liquid. We will use a small droplet of gallium for this. Now, the second part is again to lay your aluminum piece on a flat surface. Put some newspaper or plastic sheet under it because it's going to get messy, like before. Pick a spot on the aluminum where you want to make the hole. Scratch that spot thoroughly uh, with a knife or sandpaper and you want bare, shiny aluminum exposed at the target spot. No oxide layer or dirt. Now place a few drops of liquid gallium right onto the scratch spot. If it's a flat piece, the gallium drop will sit like a little shiny puddle. It is quite beautiful, like a mercury-like droplet. But it is gallium doing its sneak attack on the aluminum again. For good measure, you can gently scratch or poke the gallium droplet onto the surface to help it penetrate. Now we have to give it some time again, 30 minutes or more. Watch as the gallium slowly infiltrates the aluminum. You might notice the edges of the droplet darkening or the aluminum turning into a dull gray around it. Evidence that the gallium is seeping in. If you're impatient, you can try wiggling a toothpick uh, on the gallium drop to see if it is seeping in, but don't spill it. Now for reference, you can see I used a can here, and the reason why I used the can is because, unfortunately, and I will show you this as well, the thick aluminum piece did not work at all. Um, apparently it was not aluminum, um, so yeah, that's why the gallium didn't, uh, didn't penetrate it and didn't break it. Now I did uh, do an extra experiment with some uh, tin foil, um, so you can see here what the reaction of the tin foil here is when you put gallium on it and it's extremely destructive. You can see just falling holes in it um, after, after a while. Now we've now created a perfect, if ragged, hole in a piece of aluminum without using any mechanical drilling. Now we can expect a hole. The edges might be a little bit crumbly or crystallized and the gallium treated area is extremely weak, crumbling at the touch, whereas the surrounding metal is still hard. Now it is a dramatic before and after difference. You essentially gave aluminum a cavity using gallium and then poked it out. This is the same effect localized. Gallium can eat a hole through aluminum by making that region feeble. If this were a boat, it would definitely be leaking by now. Now as you can see, the gallium is still sitting around the hole that we've made and you can see it in our work surface. Now remember that gallium is reusable so we can scrape it up and save it for the next time because it is too precious to waste. Now I'm going to use a piece of cardboard or a spoon and we will collect the blobs and cool them down so they will become hard again. So, let's dig into the science behind this jaw-dropping experiment. Why did a strong aluminum can turn into mush just by touching gallium? Well, the answer lies into some sneaky chemistry and physics at the microscopic level. Now, gallium alloys with aluminum. When gallium touches aluminum, it doesn't just sit on the surface, it mixes into the aluminum. Metals can dissolve into each other like mixing two kinds of Play-Doh. Gallium atoms sneak between the aluminum atoms, forming an alloy, a mixture of metals with aluminum. Now, unlike some of the other alloys, this gallium aluminum alloy is much weaker than normal aluminum. It's as if the gallium turns the strong aluminum into a fragile new metal that can barely hold itself together. In fact, with enough gallium, the aluminum becomes about as strong as wet paper. No joke. Now, aluminum is actually a very reactive metal, but in everyday life it doesn't corrode that easily because it's always covered by a thin aluminum oxide layer. Think of it as aluminum's invisible armor. Gallium's superpower is that it can penetrate or disrupt this oxide coating. 
Now when we sent it to Can or the metal piece, we gave gallium a way in. Once the gallium is in contact with the bare aluminum, it prevents the aluminum from healing its oxide layer. It's like gallium pulls off the aluminum's armor and we won't let it put back the armor. Now inside aluminum, atoms are arranged in an orderly crystal structure. This is why aluminum is strong yet lightweight. Gallium behaves like an unwanted guest at a party. It wedges itself between the aluminum atoms, especially at grain boundaries, and messes up that orderly structure. Now scientists call this gallium-induced uh, structural failure or a type of liquid metal embrittlement. Essentially, gallium makes the flexible ductile aluminum turn brittle. Imagine turning a flexible rubber hose into a dry twig, and that is literally what happens on a microscopic scale. When you try to bend or stress the gallium-treated aluminum, it just cracks and breaks instead of flexing. Now, it is important to mention that the gallium weakening the aluminum isn't a violent chemical reaction. There is no fire, no boom, and the two metals don't release toxic fumes or anything. It's more of a physical infiltration. Gallium just moves into the aluminum structure quietly and then bang! The aluminum loses its strength. It's a bit sneaky, you don't see a lot of bubbling or heat. The aluminum just gradually falls apart as we saw with the experiments, with the can and the hole. In one of our experiments, you might have noticed that the aluminum turned dull gray and flaky where the gallium touched. Now that's a sign of the new weak alloy that was forming and the metal structure breaking down. Now, to sum up the science in a fun way, gallium is like a Trojan horse for aluminum. It gets in there and the aluminum's defenses basically just collapse. What's left is a metallic mush that used to be the strong aluminum. And that is why even small amount of gallium can destroy aluminum objects. And this is why you have to keep it away from planes. So, dramatically, we essentially demonstrated how a tiny blob of one metal can sabotage another metal's integrity. Actually, it's pretty cool, right? Now, maybe you're wondering if there are other metals that can do this. Well, actually, mercury, which we haven't discussed yet, is even one of the more famous for wrecking aluminum this way, forming a beautiful amalgam. In fact, mercury was so good at this destructive trick that carrying mercury on planes has been forbidden for ages. Gallium's effect is similarly scary, which brings us to our conclusion. So by now the question why do you get into trouble for taking gallium onto a plane should be pretty clear. Bringing gallium onto a plane is like bringing kryptonite for the plane's aluminum. If gallium were to leak or spill onto the airplane's aluminum body or components, it could severely weaken the metal. Now, an airplane's fuselage, wings, and many critical parts are made of aluminum alloys. They rely on aluminum's strength. Gallium would strip that strength away, potentially causing dents and holes or structural failures. And that is a huge safety risk. No airlines wants a mid-flight surprise of, oops, the wing has a gallium hole. Now, aviation authorities know this, which is why gallium and mercury are strictly banned on aircraft for passengers. It's usually not even allowed in carry-on luggage, and if it's allowed in checked-in baggage at all, it would be under very special conditions. They treat it much like a hazardous material, not because of its toxicity or that it will explode, but because it can chemically sabotage the airplane's metal structure. Now in short, gallium and airplanes do not mix in a literal sense. The metal of the plane can literally mix with the gallium and then it's game over. So if you waltz into an airport with a bottle of gallium, expect some raised eyebrows and likely some confiscation, if not a full conversation with security. You might think of it as a cool science toy, but the airport staff sees it as a potential aircraft assassin in a bottle. It's one liquid you absolutely cannot bring on board. Now, if you want to know more about this beautiful aluminum destroyer gallium, take a look at this video. So that concludes our episode. If you think I missed anything, leave it in the comments. And if you like this episode and want to see more, make sure to like and subscribe.